It's Finavar here from my studio in Ireland and I'm here with Prima Marketing. We are going to do Facebook Live about new acrylic paints, new colors. There are eight metallic paints and there are five of the Sparks colors I would like to share with you. This is the summer release. It is uh, very exciting to have some new colors to play with and I'm sure you will love at least some of them. So I'm going to start with five new colors of Sparks. And just to compare, I also have the old colors of Sparks. So you can see the difference between these color palettes. So, uh, Sparks, these are acrylic paints you can see here. These are the uh, liquid, very creamy, very shiny metallic paints. They are a separate line uh, on purpose because as you can see, the uh, shine in them is just different kind. This is the one that is almost like mirror, like pure gold or pure liquid silver. And um, we had the combination of colors you can see before. So uh, this unicorn hair and um, dragon's eye and ginger magic and dragonfly wing and then uh, Black Raven, and then this is one of my favorites, Magical Pond, and um, Butterfly Spells, and then uh, Mermaid Sparkle, and then finally, this is Iris Potion. All of the names are a little bit magical, and you can see they were quite delicate tones, so I was thinking to make this line complete, we can add colors which will be stronger, that will be filling this um, missing uh, elements in the color palette. And that's why there are colors uh, which look like this, for example. This is Chest of Gold, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. This one, which I know some people are waiting for a long time, this is Phoenix Feather. It's absolutely beautiful red with the gold sparkle in it. Then we added Enchanted, which is amazing shade of cold, strong pink. Finally, Green Goblin, <laughs> again, magical name. Very strong, very vibrant shade of green with gold. And the last one is um, my Night Shadow, amazing color. This is one of my favorites, I think, ever. So let's have a look at the colors in real life because this is the most important part you want to see. First of all, I painted some of the elements, so I got ready for this show. Just look, I've painted some of my mold elements with these colors. So you can see Green Goblin has amazing sparkle in it. Then this chest of gold is both brown and gold. And then Night Shadow is absolutely beautiful, cold, dirty, dark blue. <laughs> and this is Enchanted and this is Phoenix Feather. So I'm glad you like the names because it took me a while to name them properly. But what is interesting is to see how they work on different colors, right? I'm going to open all of them. Let's make this space a little bit more pretty. Pretty, yes. Goblin, yes. So that is the Green Goblin, Phoenix Feather. This is Night Shadow. Here is Chest of Gold. This was the color that we didn't have at all in the line before. So this is shade of brown, but it's amazing. And then finally Enchanted. Strong, but very cold shade of pink. What is great about them, and I will show you that in a moment, also on one of the mini projects I want to show you today. Uh, the color of the shimmer really makes a difference if uh, you put it on the different surface. So I'm taking the brushes now and I will try to show you the colors. Let's start with Green Goblin. Then we will go to the Phoenix Feather. I'm going to clean my brush. Then there's Night Shadow.
chest of gold and finally enchanted colors in real life you can see they are always a little bit semi-transparent transparent on the black. It's because you are not able to make completely uh, covering metallic color, but the more layers you put, the more um, covering the color is going to be. It's, it's just a piece of the uh, canvas paper that I painted with black just on one side. So they have a little bit of different tone, especially chest of gold. You can see it's almost completely gold on the black. You can see silver tones in Enchanted and in uh, Night Shadow. And then the gobl Green Goblin, Phoenix Feather and chest of gold, they've got this golden tone in it. So let me show you what happens if you put these colors on uh, something and add water. I'm just going to show you that quickly on the piece of paper. This is just kitchen roll. But it's interesting to see that these colors are not just straight as you can see them. I'm going to put the color and add some water. So you can see Green Goblin. It's a combination of blue, green and gold. This is opening a lot of opportunities when you want to play with different techniques based on uh, water. Let's compare it to the night shadow, right? I'm adding the night shadow. You can see this is blue, but the color of the shimmer is absolutely amazing silver. Okay, let's experiment with the phoenix feather. You can see this is orange, pink, almost coral color, getting into this lovely golden tone. Wow, I would say, wow. Then let's have a look at the chest of gold. That should be similar because it's also with the gold. Let's look at the color tones. There are purples in it as well. Look, there are purples in this color. So you've got golds, you've got browns and purples. They are amazing mixture. Wow. And finally, let's look at Enchanted. Enchanted is color with silver in it. So I'm adding a bit here and you can see amazing silver. So this is how these work. All the uh, sparks, they have the special magic in them. They've got either this super shiny liquid gold or super shiny silver, and then they have different colors which are changing into this multi-tone effect when you're applying that with water. So it's good to try to play with them as if they are watercolors as well. This is just for your information because this is really cool. So I uh, just put them in the right positions, right? This is how they look like in uh, real life. This is chest of gold, phoenix feather, night shadow, green goblin, and enchanted, okay? They are exactly the same quality and exactly the same uh, finish as the previous sparks. You can see they are uh, basically, basically the same formula, but the colors are different. They are more um, saturated. For example, compare, let's compare the pinks, right? This is butterfly spells versus the new one. Okay, so you can see butterfly spells is much more pale, more delicate, more shabby. And let's compare Green Goblin to Dragonfly. You can see it's very different color. Right? There's no, no way you can make a mistake here. Let's compare this Night Shadow to the Magical Pond. And, hmm. The closest one we have to the Phoenix Feather is going to be Ginger Magic. And then finally, Chest of Gold, probably the closest to Dragon's Eye. 
So you can see I was really trying to create the colors which were missing in the Sparks palette. And now I feel my mission is completed. I really think we have beautiful selections of the colors. Let's have a look at the colors of the metallic paints. You can see I was busy. Metallics are similar, but not the same. If you used both of the paints, you will know metallic is more traditional paint. Something that is uh, still very shiny and very metallic, but without this uh, super strong uh, sh mica effect. The mica color is more corresponding with the color of the uh, paint, but they have the same creamy consistency the same uh, beautiful, uh, vibrant colors. Uh, it's just like a bit different kind of animal. Uh, they are um, absolutely amazing to play with. And I will just show you all the colors now. So this is the first one. You can see this is a delicate tone of purples. This is uh, something which probably will uh, be great for the shabby project. It's French lavender. And this is the one that we are going to try in a moment. French lavender, absolutely beautiful. That's number one. Then let's get to the, another purple, the very different purple. This is amethyst. Amethyst is almost on the burgundy side of purple, just to show you the final effect here. We've got eight colors in this line, so I hope you will like them as well. Something beautiful, this is simply called flame, but I think it's like the one of the best shades of red. And flame, I'm sure will be a favorite for a lot of you for your projects because it's absolutely mesmerizing. Okay. And now let's have a look at this beautiful um, pink watermelon peachy color, which is called Spring Blossom. Spring Blossom is this tone that is somewhere between the different tones of orange and pink. And I completely fell in love with this one. I made a project with this one already and I will show you that in a moment. And then let's go to another beautiful color, something for people who like the um, shades of mint, shades of jade. This is jade stone. This is the one that we have here painted already on this a little sample and this is the color. They have a lot of mica inside. They're very, very uh, rich, but at the same time, there are some more delicate colors and some more vibrant colors. So there's something for everyone. This is Dragonfly. I was thinking about this color from the beginning. Dragonfly is this amazing gold green shade. I'm sure it's going to steal somebody's heart because it is amazing. And finally, we go to the brown and to the dirty blue. Dirty blue, it's called Stormy Ocean. It's a little bit in the similar tone to uh, Sparks, but it has different feeling to it. It's much more like velvet instead of super shiny. So Stormy Ocean, and this is the one. Yeah, and then finally Hazelnut. So amazing and beautiful shade of warm brown. Where can we get them in the US? Well, uh, you should check with your independent stores which carry Prima and you can buy them online in a lot of shops. If you can check on my Facebook group, there's a list of the shops which are in different countries. It's in the documents. It's in Finavar and Friends Open Studio and there in the document or in the comments, you can find the names and the websites of the shops which carry my product. So this is going to be helpful, I hope. Ah, oh, and uh, this is, of course, um, the color 
that we need to try. So again, let's have a look at the black end on the white. And I will start with lighter colors. So we can go to the darker ones without cleaning the brushes too much. I hope this is going to work. I will try to put the colors here so you can see them. Let's try with a um, spring blossom first. Yeah, that was Meshkin. I'm sorry. He is sometimes a little bit cheeky. Now, this is Jade Stone. I don't think this is bad color at all. Um, this one is light, so French Lavender. Well, I think I need to squeeze my colors a little bit. So just to show you the lightest tones, as you can see. Okay, now let's go to the darker ones, the Dragonfly. That's the dragonfly. You can see it is almost the same on the white and on the black. So that won't be as surprising as the sparks are, which may be advantage. <laughs> then stormy ocean. And then finally, Amethyst. Oh. Okay. Now I have to squeeze two of the colors in somehow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. Okay, I will be trying hard. This is flame and finally hazelnut so in these paints if you would like to make the same um, the same try as we are doing with the uh, with the sparks, you will see the color of the shimmer is more corresponding with the color of the paint and this is not as vis visible as it is in sparks. So there is a difference between these paints. They give you different feeling. I'll try to hold them. These are much more shiny than these ones. They have this like wow factor. I know this is not for everybody and um, I absolutely understand you don't have to love them all but uh, maybe there's something from the shiny palette that you would like to include in between the metallics as well. I will just encourage you to try. So let's play a little bit with the colors. Let's see what happens if you take these colors and add water. Let's for example try the apple Sorry, apple blossom. Uh, spring blossom. You can see the change is not so dramatic. You can see the shimmer is lighter, but it's not as it was with the uh, with the sparks. Let's try maybe the jade stone. Yeah, it is similar. It's really similar. So you can see a bit of shimmer, but it is not exactly as um, green. It's a little bit whitish silver tone, but mm -hmm. maybe let's try the darker one, Amethyst. So you can see it's purple in purple. So that is giving you some idea how these paints are made. They are more corresponding. Just to compare, uh, maybe Stormy Ocean. Yeah, it's also silver in the blue, but this is very different kind of silver. So this would be the way it works. So I think it's time to play on something to see how the paints are working. Just to uh, have the idea 
how they will work in real life. So I prepared two samples. <laughs> this is white one and I also have the black one. So we can try some colors on different surfaces to see uh, what will happen and what colors would be good for you. Um, I think we can start with the black one and kind of naturally this would be better for the darker colors. So I was thinking about trying the tones of purples and blues on it. That sounds like a good plan, I think. I, I have um, the mold made uh, moon and stars and some cogs here on this uh, dimensional MDF tag. So let's paint, let's play with some water. So you will see how these paints will work. I'm starting with metallic and I will just first dry brush a little bit of the color on the top. Let's do it with maybe the, the stormy ocean. Okay, dry brushing means you remove the excess. So you don't need to have a lot on your brush. It's good to have a um, kind of flat brush to do it. So we are playing with dry brushing. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. So let's incorporate maybe French lavender for a little bit of the purple. It's very subtle, very delicate, almost um, like purple silver. Mm -hmm. So to make it darker, we can add the amethyst. Yeah, you can see this is different shade of purple. Now we have more magical effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you, you can play with water, so we can water it down a little bit and let the colors flow. And we can add more of the color in the desired places. And like make that flow. This is another option. So you can dry brush, you can play with watercolor. Let's dry it and see what is going to happen. So it's very easy to create effects with that. So you can see it is absolutely like simple. You can just add a little bit in the background and then you can water it down or you can add dry brush more. It depends what kind of look you are going for. Yeah, for a moment I lost my paint. Okay, so if I would like to uh, make it a little bit more special, knowing that there is um, a bit of the magic needed for this project because it's kind of dark, but you know what, well, not everybody likes dark. We can, of course, combine the metallic paints and, for example, sparks. So this is going to be my next step. I will dry it a little bit and I will add the sparks to it. I'm trying to be faster, so I will dry it just halfway, but now let's play with the night shadow. Remember this amazing silver night shadow has inside? We can use it for our advantage and highlight some of these colors the same way as we played with the other metallics, just adding another shade. You can see the silver showing, really nice. So just by adding the sparks, you can see how much more of the silver finish you can see. And of course, now we can play with adding more colors. So maybe just for the accents, adding some of the phoenix feather. <laughs> you know, you can play with that for a very, very long time. It's up to you. And, you know, imagination is the limit. It all depends what you are planning to get. I 
I'm just adding more of the silver. No, I need something more. I think like this. And some finishing touches. So, <laughs> combination of metallics and sparks. Very simple. So you've got the um, combination of the French lavender, stormy ocean and amethyst, and then extra pops down with the uh, night shadow and phoenix feather. Just to give you the idea how these colors work in real life, you can see the shine is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I was looking for the nice contrast and this is really very nice contrast. Very grungy, very colorful, something that may be your cup of tea. I hope so. Of course, after drying, all the acrylic paints like that are completely permanent. So you can do whatever you want on the top. For example, you can apply more of the paints. You can, if you don't like it, you can always repaint with gesso. Or you can use waxes on the top for the extra finishing touches. It's just one of the uh, layers that you apply on your project. You don't have to finish with them. However, they're perfect finishing paints. Okay, let's play with something white. I've got this one. This is a little bit more sweet, delicate. And before I will start adding colors to this heart, I will show you the um, cover of the journal I made yesterday and day before. I'm not sure if you can see it. This is my homemade journal. I added the pages inside, but on the top I was using mostly the Spring Blossom in the very good company of my liquid acrylics. So there's um, black and there is uh, orange, like true orange, tiger orange, sorry. And there is a little bit of the sparks. You can see this text is done with the sparks, with unicorns hair. But the main color is the spring blossom that is how this color is applied in real life you can also have a look on the back this is very uh splattery grungy but also sweet project and i'm going to use it for the next days for some uh, private journaling so i hope it's going to be um, good cover. <laughs> I was working on it following the uh, video of my friend Kasia Avery. And this is example of the finished one. So let's try to make something softer and more delicate on the white. And sometimes when you are uh, watching my videos or you are looking at the Instagram and you ask the question when is the right time to use white gesso when is the right time to use black gesso so the answer is <laughs> it depends what you're going for if you plan to repaint completely it doesn't matter so much but if you would like to see part of the background color white works better with the strong um, visible colors Really, they don't even have to be metallic. <laughs> they give you these pops that you can see from the distance. With the black, you get amazing shine using metallic paints. So this is the first, uh, the first hint. If you're planning to go for metallic, it's probably good to consider the uh, darker surface. Although, if you're planning to do soft pastel metallic, which I'm going to do now, then uh, you could probably start with the white gesso. So the plan is we're going to do similar thing we did on the moon. We're going to play with some colors to create nice, almost like watercolor finish. So, hmm, maybe we should start with some greens, right? Let's use the jade stone. Let's see what is going to be the effect. 
And I think I'm going to combine it with the French lavender. It's absolutely amazing. And then we can always add some sparks as well, of course. You can see I really apply it with more or less really careless manner. It's because the water is going to do most of the job here. So it's going to be very pastel, but in the places where there's more of the color, but I intentionally leave the groups of color like this, it's going to shine much more. Okay, let's add more of the purple in some places. And let's add a tiny bit of this blossom as well. Spring blossom color. And now it's time to dry it to see what is the result after the first application. But you can see it's very sweet and very lovely and shiny. So it's um, really up to you how you play with them. Some people like to have darker colors, some prefer like to have uh, lighter. Some of you will prefer to have them all, I hope. Let's add some contrast to it. I'm really tempted to use these two sparks. This is an uh, enchanted color, which has a bit of this amazing silver in it. Ooh, really nice. And again, the Phoenix feather. Ooh, uh, probably I should not get so excited because you know, these paints, I just created them not so long ago and uh, I should know what they do, but every time when you apply them on something, it is absolutely delightful to see how they react. I can't tell you which was my favorite color because it would be like, as you said, one of you said in the comments, picking your favorite child. But um, it's also true that my color preference changes with the mood of the day. Uh, at the moment, I'm more into pinks, corals, oranges, rusty colors. And this is also because of the our our palette on Art Daily, which is a beautiful soft coral color, and we are talking about the our inner child and coming back to the memories and taking care of ourselves. So that would be the palette I'm thinking about now. But the truth is, it may change any time. It just switches, like you know, the Mr. Jekyll, no, Doctor Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde, more more or less. I can just switch to completely different cold and pale colors in the next days and uh, it's kind of like being bipolar in artsy way it's absolutely me so it happens so this is what you can see here the new colors just to remind you there are five colors of sparks let me show you these colors they are these ones oh so night shadow green goblin Chest of Gold, Enchanted, and Phoenix Feather. And they have the most amazing shine. And I just, I think Phoenix Feather is going to be the winner of the uh, favorite child contest today. Like, look at that. Oh, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> and we've got eight of the metallic colors and they are all shipping to the stores now. You can buy them in single jars. And they should be in independent craft and art stores. Uh, of course, those which carry Prima marketing all over the world. And I know the shops in Europe are going to get them probably next week, end of next week. And the shops in the United States may have them uh, any moment now because the shipping is faster. Eight metallic colors. So Dragonfly, Spring Blossom, 
date stone, flame, amethyst, hazelnut, uh, stormy ocean, and French lavender. These are the ones that uh, are the new paints added to the range. I think they will be somebody's favorites for some time, I guess. And these are the effects you can create using them. These are some of the, you know, some of the examples I made for you here. I didn't think much about color choices, so they may be a little bit surprising, but I think they're absolutely beautiful. So, <clears throat> soft colors or dark and grungy colors. You can get both with the metallic and sparks. And I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about these paints. They are really acrylic paints that are on the market for some time already. So I think some of you had a chance to try them maybe in the classroom. Maybe uh, you have some of them at home. There are some good advices about the acrylic paints, of course. Um, some of you noticed that I store my colors upside down. It just makes the uh, drying time a little bit longer. So it's not so easy to, um, to dry them up by accident. First of all, when you put them upside down, you have to close really tightly which is important. Second thing, it's less air going to the product, but also I've got a good hint for you. If you're worried that your paint is getting thicker, you can add some liquid medium, acrylic medium inside. And in fact, we have this product for you now, and it comes with liquid acrylics. If you have this liquid color medium, this is fluid medium, you can use it in any paint, which is acrylic from my range and make it more liquid. So just if you feel that your paint was in your drawer for a long time, like maybe for one year, <laughs> maybe it's, you know, getting thicker, it's, it's a good idea to add some uh, liquid uh, medium to it. This is basically uh, acrylic paint uh, base. And this way, without changing the properties of the paint, you can make it uh, more liquid again. And also the second thing is if you don't have it and you really see that your paint is drying out or drying up, sorry, uh, you can even add just some tap water. It's better than doing nothing. So if you're not using your paints, it's really good idea to open them from time to time and check uh, how they are doing because maybe they are just lonely and sad and hoping that somebody will finally use them and they're just getting drier and drier because of the sadness. <laughs> of course, I'm joking, but we tend to forget that the products are sitting on our shelves for some time. And um, if the, it's not completely tightly closed, if you lost this little sticker which is inside, which happens a lot, if the edge of the jar uh, is getting dirty, it's kind of more possible the paints will get this extra air and you may not be as um, happy with the consistency after a longer time, of course. So this is not happening right away. Uh, it takes time, but I heard some people complaining that after opening the jar, they didn't open for a very long time. They discovered the paint was thicker. So there are solutions, right? Make sure that you are going to uh, close your paints. You are going to uh, store them upside down. Don't leave them in the sunlight. Nobody likes that for too long, right? Uh, don't leave them close to the heater <laughs> as well. This is something that uh, people sometimes don't realize, but that matters. It's the same with the food. You can store your food um, for quite a long time if you follow the instructions. So if they say, please store it in the dark, and cold place, uh, it's really better to do it. The same with acrylic paints. They will last for a very long time if you will take care of them. So <laughs> I am just here to uh, help you with the new color choices. I hope that was a useful video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are still wondering about the paints, uh, please check with your local retailers. I know some of the shops are um, 
on uh, they have them on the order and i think at least one shop i think it was in canada mentioned that they have it already so they are going to be on the shelves any moment now thank you so much for joining thank you so much to sharon for helping and i hope this short presentation was something that um you uh, wanted to see and i hope that the new colors of sparks and the new colors of uh, metallic are mm, on your wish list and um make sure you will check prima website and you will check our blog which is finavar.com uh, on the weekend i'm uh, planning to put some projects from my design team showing you the colors in real life on the projects so uh, hopefully this is something nice to see so thank you so much and i really had a great time uh, having you here in my studio and i hope to see you soon again it was finavar with prima marketing uh, from my studio in ireland and i hope uh, you are going to join us for the next facebook live in a couple of weeks bye